God is good all the times. And all the times. God is good and that is nature. Where? Nature. Uh, this is another opportunity that you want to share from the word of God. And um, we are going to start by reading from the book of Genesis chapter 12 verse 1. Chapter 12 verse 1. And it says, the Lord had said to Abraham, leave your country, your people, and your father's household, and go to the land I will show you. And I'm repeating, the Lord had said to Abraham, leave your country, your people, and your father's household, and go to the land I will show you. And the topic of the summonet of today is a call to stand apart. A call to stand apart. And um, the Holy Spirit guided me to dig deep in knowing who this man Abraham is. Who is this man Abraham? Because we don't know, or rather it is not indicated in the scriptures, his childhood life, his youthful life, but the Lord God bring up a story about this man Abraham when he is no longer a teenager. He is now a grown up. And if you put this verse to its immediate context, we realize that these statements that we just read that leave your country your people and your father's household and go to the land I will show you comes immediately after a genealogy from Shem up to Abraham. Yeah, a genealogy has, has just been given, but we don't know anything about this man, Abraham. And so, um, this man, Abraham, is a unique character in the Bible. And uh, I want us to read this book to lead us to the story of the childhood life of Abraham and even up to the youthful uh, life of Abraham before this call. Can we open the book of Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 30? Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 30 and it says you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. Can we say it together? You will seek me and find, find me. me. And when you seek me with all your heart. Can we say it together? You will seek me and find me. When you seek me with all your heart. Hallelujah. Amen. So this man Abraham, after the dispersion from the Babel, we remember the story of the Tower of Babel. We, we know it very well. So after the dispersion, in other words, after God had dispersed people, after confusing their languages, such that whatever I'm saying is an insult to the second part, we realize that idolatry again become practically universal. Something universal is something that is everywhere. Practically, universal. And the Lord finally left the hardened transgressors to follow their evil ways. In other words, if you read from the book of Patriarchs and Prophets, uh, page 125, paragraph 1, that the Lord finally left hardened transgressors to follow their evil ways. In other words, he abandoned them. He left his presence left them. He was no longer with them. And so they continued following their ways. Unfortunately, even the, uh, Abraham's father's household, whom the knowledge of God had been preserved, yielded the seductive influences surrounding them. And they also served other gods, other than who? 
Jehovah himself. That is very unfortunate. A another unfortunate thing is that Abraham, as a result, grew in the middle of superstition and heathenism or idolatry. He grew up in an environment where people were not worshipping the true God. Because, as I have said up there, idolatry became practically universal. Everyone was worshipping idols, including the family, the family of Ted, where Abraham was what? Was given birth in and even brought up. And so, we realize that after growing up in such an environment, in such an evil world, where people didn't know God, where people had forgotten about the living God, we realize that even himself didn't know that living God. And probably, at his childhood stage, he will join his parents or even his family in the worshipping of what? Of the idols. And so, another thing we need to know about Ter, he was not only worshipping these idols, but he was a well-known idol sculptor, an experienced idol man. In fact, he was the tycoon of them in making the gods that people were doing what? Was worshipping. If you don't buy a god made by terror, then maybe your god was a lesser what? Was a lesser god. And so, is the one who was making the tycoon then making the idols that the, his people were worshipping. And so, as a young child, we are told that Abraham used to watch his father carving these idols, either from stones or from wood. From stone or from wood. And after his father had finished with them, Terah would send Abraham to sell his idols in the marketplace. In other words, Terah was the seller and the market. You have to convince people to buy your God. And so we, we realize that Abraham was doing this work for his father. The work of selling the what? The idols to the people during that time. But there is something that I want to bring to your attention. That even though this man Abraham was never taught about the living God, but something was convincing him that these idols that his father was making were not really God. There must be a God somewhere, a God that is living. Remember, wood and stones do not speak. They do not hear, nor do they smell things. They do not even see. And so, when he was a child, when he was a child, he would ask his father that, why do you make these idols of people to worship them? Why will you worship these idols, my father. Because the way I'm looking at them, they don't have ears to hear, they don't have eyes to see, they can't help you even when you are remote in them. In other words, there is no way you can benefit from them. Why do you, why do you worship or make these idols of people to do what? To worship them. But his father replied to him that, how dare you question about the gods of our people? Why 
are we worshiping these things that cannot even be used by themselves? Father, I am the one who has to carry these gods to the marketplace. They can't move on their own. I don't know whether we are getting the point. Mm -hmm. Something is, we call it conscious. In his, in his mind, his conscience is telling him that these idols are not the real God. Yet there is no one who has done what? Has taught him about the living God. They cannot even move or respond to any request. But yet I see people bowing down to worship them. Then his father told him that how they are written about the gods of our what? And he realized that despite his opposition to idolatry, his father, Terah, would still send Abraham to tell the idols at the marketplace. At one point, when he was marketing the idols at the marketplace, he would say, who will buy my idols? They will not help you. They cannot hurt you. Who will buy my idols? They will not help you, and they cannot do what? They cannot hurt you. You see, if you are a good marketer, you, you need to talk good about your goods. But Abraham, in controversy, it is very contradicting in his statement regarding his goods that the goods, the gods that is selling can never help you. You can never do what? Can never hurt you. Who will do what? Who will buy them? At times you will mock them. How was he mocking them? You will take them to the river and put their faces to the water and command them to drink water. One day, when he was cleaning the gods, while his father was away in the fields, one god broke accidentally. And when his father asked him, who broke one god? Abraham directed him to the other unbroken gods in the room. That he should ask them who broke one or one of them. This is a, 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 a a child, not even, I've not reached a stage where, where is, is a young one? I am man. A child. That just ask these other gods which are here. Make they so. The person who broke one of what? One of them. <laughs> but his father replied embarrassing. Something embarrassing. For his very word, how do we say it? A pure metal repeater. Yes. Metal yes. Embarrassingly, I beaker. He said it to him. But they don't have eyes to see, mouth to speak, nor ears to hear. That who is talking? Who is, who is talking? Terror. It is Terra himself who is doing what? Who is talking? But they don't have eyes to see, mouth to speak, nor ears to do what? To hear. How do you expect me to communicate? If he has acknowledged very well that these gods that he's making are not able to speak, are not able to hear, are not able to see, then why was he worshipping them? After saying these words, then Abraham asked his father again. Now, after saying those statements, how can you worship what does not see? How can you worship what does not hear? How can you worship what cannot speak? How can you worship what cannot do and you anything good? Then Terra angrily. At first I said that he replied embarrassing. Now he replied to his son angrily. How dare you deny the gods? In other words, even Terra himself knows very well 
that these gods are not real. These gods are not living. And yet, he is deep into the idolatry until he was blinded. He was not able to seek for the living God. And so, after that incident, when a god broke down and the other gods were not able to tell Abraham's father who broke the, uh, one of them, he decided now to seek and find out. Now a living God who is able to speak, who is able to see, and who is able to do what? To believe. And so one day, he went to the mountain. In fact, not a day, at night. He went to the mountain and leaned against the rock, looking out to the sky. And when he saw a shining star, he said to himself, could this be my Lord? Could this be my God? But he realized that all of a sudden, the star had disappeared. And so he was convinced that even that star that he was watching over the sky was not the what? The God he was seeking. Then the moon started to rise. It was so brilliant. And asked himself again, could this be my God? Could this be my Lord? But later, even the moon did what? Set. But while he was still lying there on the mountain, the sun appeared and asked himself, could this be my God? Could this be my Lord? But later, even the sun did what? The sun also disappeared, or it set. Then he said that the God that I'm searching should not disappear, or should not do what? Should not set. He should always be present. And amidst all of these things, he was just said unto himself, honestly, that I think there must be a God, the creator of the stars, the moon, and even the sun, that have just seen rising and doing what? Setting. The creator of the heavens and the earth. I think there must be such a God, such a powerful God. He has the power to make the sun the star, and even the moon to rise and do what? To set. And after such a declaration, honestly, she had a voice from heaven calling me, O oh, Abraham. O oh, Abraham. And we realized that when she had such a voice, she just replied, Here I am. My Lord. What do you say? Amen. I read or we read a verse from the book of Jeremiah 29 verse 13. That when you seek me wholeheartedly, when we seek God wholeheartedly, we will do what? We will find him. And we realize that at this point, Abraham has found a living God. A God that is able to speak a God who was able to hear him, even without saying a word, but could listen from his heart, and a God who is able to see him. Praise the Lord. Yeah. And it continues by saying that Abraham, trem Abraham trembled and said, Here I am, O Lord. But God replied to him again, Submit to me. Be my friend. Thou 
that's why Abraham is called a friend of who? God. A friend of God, or God's friend. I think we have read that verse. And we are told that Abraham fell to the ground crying, and he said, I submit to the Lord of the universe. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. If we seek God wholeheartedly, even if you are born in a generation where God is not known, you will surely find him. The same way Abraham did what? Abraham found him. And we are being told that he kept his face down until nightfall. He then got up in the evening, went back to his home in peace, full of conviction that God Almighty has guided him to that place. Hallelujah. Amen. So we are being told that a new life started from Abraham, and his mission was now to call his people to monotheism. To call his people to the worship of one God, and that God, we call him Almighty God. We call him Jehovah. We call him Elroy. What do we learn from this story? There are two lessons, and one of them I've mentioned that. If we seek out for God with all our heart, in the middle of confusion, we will find him. And he will be our friend. He will not only be our friend, but also be our father. Praise the Lord. Amen. He will not only be our father, but he will bless us. Not just blessing us, but to bless us above. And it will not end there. He will not only bless us, but he will also bless the whole world through us. Hallelujah. Amen. That is lesson number one. Number two, I, I extracted it from the same book, Patriarchs and Prophets, page 125, paragraph one, that the true faith was not to become extinct. That is during the time of Abraham. And it can never become extinct. I am repeating that statement. That the true faith was not to become what? Extinct. And can never become extinct. Pastor Muhid. May you try to explain to me that one so that we may understand it better. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The true faith becoming not becoming extinct. Yani ile imani hadisi isipo dhihirika. Basi hata nasi hatuwezi kuwa na matunda tunayo Something extinct, something that is feeding us, that is here to be That is the idea. Really? Thank you, Peter. Yes. To, to explain it is to, like, is to eliminate something. To cease to exist. To cease to exist. So, in other words, that the true faith mm -hmm. could not really cease to exist in that time. Yes. Neither will it be. Even in our times. Yes, even if we are persecuted, God will still preserve some people like Abraham who are born amidst confusion who will stand with that true faith. Hallelujah. Yes. And that may be you. Maybe who? Maybe me. And it continues. That God has ever preserved a remnant from age to age in unbroken line to serve. And not only to serve him, but a remnant whom he would reveal his will unto. He preserved Adam, he preserved Seth, he preserved Enoch, he preserved Methuselah, he preserved Noah, he preserved Shem in a, in a broken line until we reach the son of Terah. 
that is Abraham. And we realize that he became the inheritor of this holy throne. That is what I wanted to share with us this morning so that we may know that the Lord God has even preserved you in the line of Christ to be his message, to be his servant. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.